Welcome into the studio to this dog's eye drawing for beginners, pastel drawing. Now this is an older video, but I thought I'd re-edit it because it's got some really interesting and cool tips and techniques in there, building up that little bit of fur as well. Now you'll see me use a blending tool I was trying out in the video. I haven't used it since. I was finding that it was creating marks, especially in light areas, and I only ever use pastel stumps now. Enjoy the video and right at the very end I've got another video that will absolutely help you improve your art super fast. As per usual with my new drawings, if there's a very bright highlight I get that in place pretty much straight away. Now this is, I'm not going too complicated with this, this is just a very basic eye, a dog's eye, something quite easy to do just so I can show you where I would use you know, the different uh, blending tools, really. I'm just going to lightly put in where some of the highlights are, and then I can start blocking in the main undercolors and the tones. The pencils I generally use, if you're new to my videos, Pit and Carbothello. Now, the thing is with these styluses, what you need to do is, number one, make sure it's clean. I didn't particularly clean mine after I just showed you that quick intro. And the other thing, you don't want to rub them hard. All the styluses I've found are black tipped. I haven't found a white tipped one. Now the problem is, because pastel mat is um, a textured paper, if you rub the stylus hard on there, then it's going to leave a mark. So you want to do it very lightly. I wasn't bothered in this area because it's going to be um, tinted anyway. I'm going to put some colour in the white of the eye. But um, make sure you've got plenty of pastel down when you're using them. And as I said, use them lightly. And if you use them lightly, you're not going to uh, get much, if any at all, of that black um, transfer from the tip. May not even be that many cases where you're really blending highlights, not something we normally do. The highlight is generally um, kind of left there, so it is quite pure. So it shouldn't be a problem. But now that I've, I've obviously finished this demo, I'm doing the voiceover at the end. I can confirm that if you just use it very lightly, usually in circular motions at stylus, you won't get much contamination at all. On your pastels. So as I said basic eye and um, there's obviously lots of different ways in which you can do the underdrawing as well and the blending. For instance you can block it all in, you could blend it, push it into the paper with um, a soft pastel stump so I start rolled up paper. The Derwent are the softer ones, a rice paper a rice paper stump. So that's one way if you're doing a fairly large subject such as this eye then you can always use your finger to rub it into the paper surface. But I wouldn't particularly be using the stylus for the, for that large an area. The, the, the whole idea of them is for the smaller areas where I'm struggling to get my finger in. I just want a slight blend in there and I think you know they're a cheap tool to have decent addition and personally on pastel matte paper they're working a lot lot better than those um, color shapers. So I'm just going to speed it up a bit now because I'm just doing this blocking in stage and I only use pencils on this quick tutorial.
So that's the basic fundamentals of the eye blocked in. I might do a bit of fur around there as well. In fact, I will do some fur, but just basic fur. I'm not going to spend much time on it. And this is where you can see I can use that little stylus. And you can see it's just lightly blending everything in. And then I can layer more colours on top. The blending helps to push the pastel down into the paper. But as I said, when I'm using our stylus, I'm using very light pressure. And it's moving the pastel around the surface, blending together rather than removing it as I found with the colour shapers. Now sometimes when I'm blending I use the the stumps. You can see I'm using this one at about a 45 degree angle, so I'm using kind of on its sides. I want to blend quite a lot. I want to push it into the into that surface. It's a larger area. And fur is going to come out from this as well, so that's why I'm going in the direction there that the fur is going to flow out from the edge of this. Uh, skin area. Now I'll just start to add a little bit more refinement, so building up my layers. Now that I've got the basic elements in place, put a colour into the white of the eye as well. So a bit more pastel down in there now. And this is the kind of area that I'd start to struggle to blend with my finger. So that's where I can use the stylus lightly. You can see it's just softening everything in there. So it's going to be really handy just for things like this and smaller areas as well. I wish I could find some some of the styluses that are even smaller but I haven't found anything just yet. Now sometimes when you build up an area with pencils as I've just done, you actually just want to dab it on there because all you want is a very, very subtle blending. Nothing more than that. As I said, tricky to get in those areas sometimes with your fingers. And if I'd used the pastel um, stump, it would have been started removing the colour from the eye, which I just built up. Same with the colour shaper. Colour shapers work on other papers, a smoother papers, but not at all really on the um, papers that grab the pastel. So I wouldn't use them on a UART 
or anything like that, any of the sanded papers. So just doing a little bit more refinement. And I'll just play around now, adjusting colours here and there, adjusting the tones here and there. The beauty with the pastel, obviously, with pastel matte paper, we can layer on top. And keep going and going for as long as I wanted to, really, add in more refinement all the time. And because I put that white in right at the start, I've reserved it. I've, I've already got a lot of white pastel on there. I can just add a little bit more on top, really punch it up even more because it's not a dark color underneath. If I'd done the whole eye black in this section, I wouldn't have got anywhere near as crisp a white highlight as I've just got. So if you want a color to be pure white or pure black, don't put another color underneath it. And now I'm just going to add some lighter tones over the eye that's going to give it that wet look, more of a, a shiny appearance. Then I'll just do a little bit of work, just roughly, on the fur on the outer sections. And you can see how I can quite easily just float this pastel on top of the work that I've done underneath, just to get it, get that glossy, glassy look. As I said, just going to put some fur in, roughly, just because it's going to make the eye look um, like it's in the, the proper environment. It looks a bit strange at the moment. So if I just put a basic bit of fur in, this um, eye took me just about 30 minutes, 35 minutes from start to finish. So you can see it's, it's not my finest work at all, but I just wanted to show you how I use various tools for some of these blending stages. And this is a really simple subject, something I could do quite quickly. So I'm just putting some basic colors down. I could have used a um, pastel sticks. I could use soft pastels. Could use Conti sticks for this. Wanted to keep it simple, so I've just used pencils. The main reason we're using things like uh, Conti sticks or pastel sticks, it just saves your pencils. If you're using pencils for all the underlayers as well, especially large areas, they're going to weigh down super fast. And now because I want to really blend this in, it is going to be just an underlayer. I've got that paper stump out. It's a soft one because I want it to really blend in. If I use the hard stump, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't move the um, pastel around like this one is doing. I want it to really blend out nice and soft so I can build those layers on top. So if I push this down into the pastel surface it's going to give me the ability to add more layers. If I leave it just floating on the surface it's taking up the tooth and I can't add as many layers of details as I'd want.
Okay, so that's a nice simple underlayer. Now I'm going to go with lighter pencils, obviously going in the fur direction. You heard me say that probably on all my videos, really important. The direction that fur is going, growing, lying on the animal, that's giving us the information of the shape and form underneath. So it's critical that we follow the correct shape and form. My strokes are quite random as I'm doing this as well following that form but random sh strokes and by that I mean what we don't want is like a picket fence we don't want our strokes all line up next to each other it'll look really unnatural so that's all I'm going to do now I'm just going to keep lightening and lightening bringing more distinctive fur as I said it's just basic fur just so you get a, a feeling of the eye actually on the head correctly Nice sharp pencils for this section. Lots and lots more tips and full length tutorials obviously on my website and on my Patreon art channel. Lots of different subjects in there now. We've got work on skin and scales and elephants, dogs, cats, big cats. Lots and lots of different subjects. So as I add just a few more details, bring this video to a close. Hope it's give you a few more ideas and shown you a few ways on how I use different tools for blending, especially for smaller areas and those new stylus um, tools, which I've only, this is the first time I've used them properly, but I can see they're going to be um, very handy for those smaller areas for blending. So just to recap, large blending areas that's where I'm going to be using my hands my fingers when we're going a bit smaller then and still fairly large that's where I'm going to be blending and pushing into the canvas or into the paper with um, soft pastel stamps when I'm coming really small much smaller then I don't want to go removing any pastel I just want to finally blend it that's where I'm going to be using the rubber tipped stylus so as I said, hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all again on the next video real soon.